want to be a rebel, read your Bible, because no one else is doing that. That's rebellion. Okay? So if you want to be a radical person in your life and be completely different, do what a lot of people are not doing, and that's reading the Bible each and every day. Okay? And so today's sermon, I want that to be able to impact your head, your heart, and your hands. I want the message to be able to give you better understanding of the Bible and that knowledge. I want that to flow down into your heart. And hopefully by doing that, it's going to impact your hands. What you do with your life is going to be different. I need you to apply the message today. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, it says, Everyone who hears my words and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. And so what we need to do is in order for us to be these wise men, not only do we need to know, hey, this is how I'm going to do it, but you actually need to do it. You see, you can be given all the instructions in life, but if you don't do that, it does you no good. Okay? So let us be wise to build our house on that rock to actually do it. This is today's uh, comment. It says, I don't care if he's a special baby, he's sleeping on my lunch. <laughs> That's coming from the cow. So, okay. Hopefully that makes sense. So, okay. All right. So, uh, this month we are doing our Songs of Christmas sermon series. And so, today's sermon title it is titled Hurrying to Bethlehem. And so, there's going to be a big focus today on Bethlehem. And so, the sermon question for today is, what do we do when we receive the message of Jesus Christ? So all of us, there's a reason why we're all here. Because we have heard, we have received this message of Jesus Christ. But the question is, what do we do when we receive this message of Jesus Christ? And so maybe perhaps I haven't been the only one to ask myself that question. But maybe you have also asked, okay, so now that I've heard about Jesus Christ, so what? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So that so what is very, very simple. Today, if there's one thing that I just want you to take away and remember, it's really simple. It's this. God wants us to hurry to Jesus. Are you running to Jesus? Because that's what you and I should be doing. So I want to share a story with you guys. Uh, so about two years ago, I went into the mall, and so uh, my, my phone had broken. And so they, they had a, a store located in the mall that can fix broken cell phones. And so I went to the guy at the counter, and he wasn't Asian, but he had dark hair. So we were just talking and things like that, and you know, me, I like to get to know people and ask questions. So then I said, so if you don't mind me asking, where are you from? And so he says, I am from Bethlehem. Wow. And I was a little taken back by that, you know. I was thinking, like, he was going to maybe say, like, oh, I'm from, like, Canada, or I'm from somewhere but he said that he was from Bethlehem. And you should see my eyes. They got so big. I had never met somebody from the little town of Bethlehem in my life. And what are, what's somebody that's living in Bethlehem? What are they doing in small town Wisconsin, Wausau? So I got all excited. So I'm like, dude, this guy in the back of my head this guy's from Bethlehem. So, and that's the reason why he was Middle Eastern, you know. And so, I'm not really sure if he was Israeli or if he was Palestinian. Because in Bethlehem, there are two different groups of people that live there. And so, I guess I didn't specifically ask, are you Jewish or are you Palestinian? So then, in talking with him, I'm like, so it must be really cool to have come from Bethlehem. Because I'm like all excited. And uh, he just came back with a really dry response. And he's like, well, no, not really. I'm like, come on, it's Bethlehem. Like, how many people have gone to this little town of Bethlehem where Jesus Christ was born? So 
So then all of a sudden, a thought came to my head, and I was thinking, all right, Al, you got you to step back a little bit. You're a Christian. You believe in God. Bethlehem is really cool. But maybe, perhaps, you know, like, this person is not a Christian. So then I said, so do you believe in Jesus, that this was where Jesus was born? Okay? And so he said, no, I don't believe in Jesus. And I said, come on, like, you live in Jesus' birth city, right? And he says, no, I don't believe in Jesus. I'm like, okay. So if you don't believe in Jesus, what do you believe in? And he said, I believe in my arms, I believe in my legs, I believe in my head. I believe in the things that I can see. But Jesus, I cannot see. So I can't believe in Jesus because I don't see Jesus. Okay? So that was his response to me. And, uh, you know, that just kind of took me back a little bit to think, man, this guy, like, born and lived in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus Christ, and he's not even a believer of Jesus Christ. And so I kind of walked away from that conversation just a little sad to, to, for me to realize that this guy was born there, and he didn't acknowledge God at all. So that was very, very sad. Okay. Keep in mind, this is a plug-in for all of us. Um, our church is hoping that in 2020, we can take a journey together to the Holy Land. And so, Mela and I, our 20-year anniversary will be coming up summer of 2020. We will, will have been married for 20 years. And we really want to celebrate our 20-year anniversary, anniversary uh, you know, kind of like the place where Jesus Christ walked. And so, if any of you guys are very interested in that, I'm giving you guys about a year and a half to save money for that so that we can all go on that trip together. I think that would be a trip of a lifetime to be able to go to a little town of Bethlehem. How cool would that be? Okay? Alright. So anyways, our song today is O Come All Ye Faithful. So the first song that we did was Silent Night. Okay? And then uh, the other one that we did is, what was the other one that we did? Oh, oh, Holy Nate, okay? So, this song, we don't actually know a whole lot about it. What we do know is that this guy is the author of it. John Francis Wade, this was written around the 1740-ish, around that area, uh, originally written in Latin text from the Roman Catholic Church in France. So we actually don't know a whole lot about this song, but the lyrics, these are the lyrics. And so, um, today we're going to be talking about this song specifically. So, I wanted to ask you guys, can you find the part where it says, Oh, come all ye faithful in today's Bible verse? So, the song is called, Oh, come all ye faithful, and I gave you guys this Bible verse. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 16. Can you find it? Here in the Bible, where the title, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful, would be most closely related to. Which part of the Bible verse? Luke, what do you think? Where would Oh, Come All Ye Faithful? most closely be related to our Bible verse today. Mary? Well, they say, let's go to Bethlehem, let's see that this thing that has happened before is still as All right. Right there. Let's go to Bethlehem. So, oh, come all ye faithful, that, this entire song that we're going to be saying, singing later, that entire song would be the most close related to that Bible verse where it says, let's go to Bethlehem. So I guess if the original authors of O Come All Ye Faithful, if they weren't creative enough, they could have just titled, hey, let's go to Bethlehem. Okay? That's what they would have done. But they were creative enough to say, all right, 
Let's call this, O come all ye faithful, okay? So who are the first people to hear about the good news of the great joy? Who are the first people? Uh, and this is also called the Annunciation. The, the proclamation, the, the news, the heralding of this great news. Who are the first folks to hear this? Okay? It is the shepherds. So the shepherds are the first one to hear about the birth of Jesus Christ that night. Why shepherds? Why do you guys think? Why shepherds? Why not the politicians? Why not the religious leaders? Why not the nurses? The doctors? Why a bunch of shepherds? They were out under the open sky. Okay. What? Did you say something, Simon? Huh? Pastors. Pastors. Okay. So why the shepherds? And it's really simple. They were ordinary, humble folks. So I think this reminds all of us. That, you know, God didn't choose the rich people. God didn't choose the popular people. Of all the people that God chose to announce this first to was a bunch of lowly shepherds who didn't have a whole lot of money, who didn't have a lot of power, who didn't have a whole lot of prestige. God worked his message first to the lowliest people. And today, what I love about the cross is none of us, none of us are banking it, right? Anybody banking it that I'm not aware of? Okay? All right? None of us are celebrities. None of us have all this status. But I think God reminds us that this, these are the people that I want to work through. The lowly people. The humble people. And so that's all of us. Okay? So then the angel comes and they see this angel for the first time ever. And so, I mean, they're freaked out, right? Okay? They are completely freaked out by the presence of this angel. And why wouldn't you, right? Why would you not be freaked out if you've never seen an angel before out of nowhere? And, and keep Keep in mind that this is in the middle of the night, and so it's completely pitch black, what? Dark. And this angel of light from God comes. I mean, can you imagine how bright that had to be standing in the presence of this angel? Okay? So they were completely freaked out seeing this angel, but they had every right to be freaked out. Okay? So then the angel says, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And so then after that, all these other angels come and join that one angel. That had to be such a powerful experience, being in the presence of not just one of God's angels, but all of these angels. That had to be such a cool experience to have been able to go through. And so today, you guys are going to know a little bit more about this area of Bethlehem, okay? Someday, when we can go there together as a church, this is known as the shepherd's field. The reason why this is known as the shepherd's field is in the back, that is the modern day city of Bethlehem. But this open field that you guys see, that's called the shepherd's field. And the reason why is because historians believe that that's the actual field in which the angels came upon the shepherds to announce them of the birth of Jesus Christ. And so this is three kilometers away from the central city of Bethlehem. And so it's two to three miles outside of Bethlehem. So then after they hear this news, okay, the Bible says they say to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. 
This might also be the same thing as, oh, come let us go, or like today's song, oh, come all ye faithful, right? Let us go together. Let's go and see what this child is, the Messiah. This is our Savior that's born. Oh, let us go there together. Let us go to this city of Bethlehem where baby Jesus is born. So Bethlehem, it actually means the house of bread. That's what it means. Now, I believe that if Bethlehem was located in Asia, it would be known as the house of rice. Okay? <laughs> All right? Because us Asians, we don't eat bread. We eat rice instead. But in the Middle East, they eat lots of bread. And so Bethlehem actually means the house of bread. And so really, really cool. Uh, why is this really important and why does this make sense? It actually makes sense because in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus replied. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Isn't that cool for him to say, I am the bread of life? But not only could Jesus say, yo, I am the bread of life, but I was born in the city of the bread of life. <laughs> so, I mean, Jesus Christ is bread, and he was born in the city of bread, all right? So then, uh, the, the prophet Micah, before Jesus Christ was even born, hundreds of years before Jesus Christ was born, the prophet Micah had already predicted that in the near future, there is going to come a very powerful ruler that would be birthed in, of all places, the city of Bethlehem. So these aren't coincidences that Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. God had a line for all of these things to happen. Micah, in his book, in chapter 5, verse 2, he says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. Micah says, from this old little city of Bethlehem is going to become the greatest, mightiest, most powerful ruler. And that is going to be the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. So, if you guys see at the very top where it says Nazareth, that's where, Jesus, that's where Joseph and Mary they went to Bethlehem because there was going to be a census. So they started up in Nazareth, and they made their trip all the way around, that's the red line, all the way until they got to uh, Bethlehem. So from Nazareth to Bethlehem, it was around a 90-mile trek that they made. Most likely, we believe that Mary was riding the donkey, okay? And then once they got to Jerusalem, so from Jerusalem to Bethlehem was only five miles. And so it's very interesting for you guys to know this. Because where Jesus Christ was born to where Jesus Christ died, I mean, it was only about five miles apart. So Jesus in his lifetime, he didn't travel very, very far. So at the most, he would have gone... I would say about a hundred miles from really where he was born. And so this is um, somebody's drawing that they tried to do. They tried to picture what might have Bethlehem been like a long time ago. And so that's what we might have seen if we would have gone to Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. Can anybody guess what Bethlehem city population during this time might have been? What do you guys think? 500. 500? Anybody else? Harley? 100. 100. Anybody else? Okay. So, Bethlehem city population, according to historians, 
they believed that Bethlehem was a town of around 300. Okay? So it was not a very, very big city. And so today, if you were to go there to the actual spot of where Jesus Christ was born, you would see a manger. Instead, what you would find it is the church of the nativity in Bethlehem. So this is the church that basically is on the property of where they believe Jesus Christ was born that night in a manger. And so it is the church of the nativity. And then inside of the church, if you go there, you are going to find the church of the nativity grotto. That's what it's called. And so a grotto is kind of like a small little cave. And so in this spot right here, right here, like in this exact spot, that's where they believe that Jesus Christ was born. And inside of the grotto, you will see that star. And so according to uh, many believers, that's the actual spot where Jesus Christ was born. And so what people like to do is they like to go into the church and then they like to touch that spot with their hand, the actual spot where they believe Jesus Christ was born. And so that's, that's called a grotto. Really interesting. So what it could have looked like that night as the shepherds ran to see the baby. For all we know, I mean, Bethlehem could have just been 10, 15 little buildings kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And so um, that's what it might have looked like. Okay. So you guys are hearing this Christmas story, and you guys might be thinking, okay, so this is a great story, but how is this related to me? What does the Christmas story mean to me? So here's how it's related to you. You and I, we are all going through different walks in our life. We're all on different journeys. Some of us have a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. And some of us, okay, we still are struggling to come to have a better understanding of Jesus Christ. Is this Jesus person for real? Is this Jesus person the Messiah? Is this Jesus person the one that's going to save me? And so then, you might be thinking, is this Messiah thing really real? I can tell you, for the Jewish people, it's not. They are still waiting for their Messiah to come. They believe that Jesus Christ was maybe a good person, but he's not the Messiah that they're waiting for. But we as Christians, we say Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He is the Lamb of God. He is our Lord and He is our Savior. And so then, it's really easy for the shepherds that night to believe. Because I'm sure they were questioning, is this Messiah thing for real? And you can't doubt that when the angels from God come and tell you, this is for real. So the Hebrew and Greek word for angel actually means messenger. So I, I don't know what your definition of an angel is, but most simply, an angel is just a messenger of God. This is the reason why a lot of times when we see the angel Gabriel in the Bible, She's just delivering a message. Like when she met Mary, Hey, I'm the angel Gabriel. My message to you is, you are going to be having God's kid. She was just a messenger. When the angel Gabriel met with Joseph, I mean, that message was, Hey, don't let go of her. She didn't do nothing wrong. You need to continue to hold on to her. She is having God's kid instead. And so these angels are really, really just God's messengers. So then you might be thinking, you might never see one of God's true angels in your life, but there are many messengers that God has sent in your life. 
Okay? You guys, you know, we have all heard of all those miracle stories of these angels appearing to help people. Okay? You guys have seen the movies, you guys have heard the stories. For all I know, you could have even had your own personal experience in which you believe that you have encountered an angel, okay? That might be you. Myself, I haven't had that experience, okay? But what I can tell you is that although I have never had an angelic messenger come into my life, I have had plenty of people who I know and believe that were God's human messengers, that God spoke through them, and they're speaking to me. So we can't be like, well, I'm not sure if this Jesus thing is really for real, because angels have never appeared to me and said, hey, Jesus Christ is for real. I am proof of that. You've got to believe in Jesus. We can't wait for that to happen, because if you wait for that to happen, it might never happen. But I'm letting you know there are messengers in your life today whom God is speaking through them. Allow these people to be God's messengers into your life. So what do the shepherds do once they receive the message of the birth of Jesus Christ? When the shepherds received the message, Jesus Christ is born, this is what they did. They said, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's get out of here. The Bible says they hurried to the village. Once they heard the message, they didn't wait around and be like, all right, so should we go? Should we stay? Um, do we have all of our stuff ready yet? What about the sheep? What's going to happen to them? Are the sheep ready to go? You see, the shepherds, they didn't get around in a, they didn't gather around in a circle and said, all right, so we just seen these angels. Should we really go? Let's, let's debate this. Let's figure this out. They didn't do any of that stuff. The Bible tells us that they hurried off to the village. Now, how many of us have been told about Jesus Christ, but we're too lazy to hurry to Him? How many of us have heard of Jesus Christ, but how many of us have become like this? I am busy doing nothing. Do not disturb. <laughs> How many of us have heard the message of Jesus Christ, but yet we're very stationary? We're very content just not doing anything about that. But instead, we just sit at home and we're just a bunch of lazy couch potatoes. We are not doing anything with God's message. And this is not what God wants us to do. God revealed his message to the shepherds. They didn't wait around. They hurried out of there to go and find baby Jesus. So once we have found Jesus Christ, is that all that God requires for us to do? If we have found Jesus Christ, is it good enough? For us to just be content, like, all right, Jesus, I have you in my life now. I'm totally okay with that now. No. The shepherds, they heard the news of Jesus Christ. They got their butts out of there. They went to find Jesus. There's a lot of us here today that we have found Jesus Christ. But I'm here to say that it's not good enough for us to just be like, well, I have found Jesus Christ. We have to do something more with who we have found in Jesus Christ. After the shepherds found baby Jesus, what did they do? And this is for us. You see, the shepherds heard 
the good news. They went to find the good news. And when they found the good news, Jesus Christ, here's what Luke tells us. Luke chapter 17 to 18. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angels had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. I'm here today to tell you that if all of us, if we have received the message of Jesus Christ, that's awesome. But we're only halfway there. Because just like the shepherds, they did go and see baby Jesus, and they were like, well, this is really cool. How awesome. Let me just hold this experience to myself. They didn't do that. The Bible tells us that they went out and shared with everyone their story of what happened to them. Now, how many of us during this holiday season, how many of us have found Jesus Christ? How many of us are going out there to tell other people about what God has done for you? How many of you are going to share your story about how God has made an impact in your life? We all need to be like those shepherds, those humble shepherds. They received, they went, and they didn't stop, but they went out there and told their story. And so I, I love this song because I, I love this picture. Oh, come, let us go. Oh, come, all ye faithful. You see the cross? Here we are. And I'm saying, hey, let us come, let us go. All that are faithful. So as I look out in the room today, these are all the faithful people that I see gathered here today. And what I'm telling all of us is let us go to Jesus Christ together. Some of us are closer to Bethlehem, right? Some of us have maybe just received the message of Jesus Christ. But all of us are hearing the good news of Jesus Christ today. There is no one that can leave this room today and say, I don't know about Jesus. No, you can't say that. And so if all of us have heard the good news of Jesus Christ, then what's more important than that is all of us coming together, just like the shepherds came together, and they said, hey, let's hurry to Bethlehem. And so today's song, Oh, come all ye faithful, let us faithful ones from the cross, let us come together, and let us go and see Jesus together. I'm going. I want you to come with me. And when we get there, let us not be content with just saying, that's good enough for me. But if you have seen the power of Jesus Christ, let us go out there and share the testimonies of what God has done in our life. And this is the greatest news. The greatest news is that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior of the world, has been born. And so God loves us so much that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to come to be born in this world for all of us. Let us go and meet Jesus together. And so here's the thing. Everybody's in a different walk with their life. But if you're not walking to meet Jesus, if you're not going to Him, my encouragement to you this morning is come alongside us because we're moving together forward. Mm -hmm. We're going to Bethlehem. We're going to meet Jesus Christ. And we want every single one of you to be part of that team. And so, my inspiration to you this morning 
It comes to us in the form of a video. This is a Christmas inspiration for us to continue to focus on Jesus. And let us not forget about the reason why we celebrate Christmas. It's not about the shopping. It's not about anything else. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> So this is the reason why today's sermon question has been, what do we do when we receive the message of Jesus Christ? And so it's really simple. God wants us to hurry to Jesus. We need to be moving closer to Him. Don't think that you have tomorrow because there's no guarantee tomorrow. We need to hurry to Him today. And that's the reason why today's sermon title is Hurry to Bethlehem. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the love that you give to us each and every day. And Lord, as we just gather here this Sunday morning, closer and closer to Christmas Day, Lord God, thank you for your reminder in our life. Lord God, that we need to be running to you. Lord God, instead of running to you, sometimes we run to us stores. We run to other people, and we run to other activities, we run to other things. And in that process, we totally forget about 
your Son, Jesus Christ, we forget to run to the reason for our season. And so, Lord God, we ask that you please remove all these obstacles that prevent us from having a healthy relationship with you during this holiday season. The mad rush of the entire season. Allow us to not be hurrying to do all of these things, but instead for us to be hurrying closer to you. So, Lord God, we thank you for your message today. We pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.